ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance that we have is the guidance of our beloved prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invented to this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atan dalalah and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fil nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd an abi tarda radiyallahu anhu qal sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam yaqul ma min shay'in yuda'u fil mizan athqal min husn al khuluq rawahu at-tirmidhi wa hadha hadith hasan in the sunan of at-tirmidhi abu darda he mentions that he heard the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam say nothing that is placed on the scale is heavier than good character good manners wa an samara wa an samara ibn jundab radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al hasab al mal wal karm at taqwa this hadith which is hasan in the sunan of ibn maja the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said being honorable is wealth wealthiness is being honorable with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being honored by Allah it's not the money you have that makes you wealthy a noble character having good noble character and manners this is taqwa this is piety and righteousness this is the true person who keeps his duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa an Abdullah ibn Amr radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam inna min akhyarikum ahsanakum khulqa this hadith which we have in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the best amongst you is the one who's best in their manners and character. وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها أم المؤمنين قالت قال رسول الله سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن المؤمن ليدرك بحسن خلقه درجة الصائم القائم. Rawahu Abu Dawood wa sahahu Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullah The messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was heard to have said by a person's good character and manners a believer will reach the level of the person who fasts every day and gets up every night for the night prayers just by the good character and the good manners My brothers and sisters in Islam though we hear these hadith commonly we acknowledge them but never do we let it guide our everyday life we forget them in our characteristics and in our mannerisms and if our character was good if our manners were good and if we were upright then our marriages would be more healthy and stable and happy our family units would function more properly our brothers and sisters in Islam would be loved and we would have good hopes and good thoughts of one another If our character was good and upright, our neighbors would be respected, the poor and the weak would be taken care of. People in general would be safe and content and happy. So this issue of our character being the heaviest thing on our scales, we have to review it. 
Ibn Abi Zayd al-Qayrawani, rahimahullah, he was a Maliki scholar. And he said all of the noble manners and etiquettes, they revolve around four a hadith. All of them, to be given this title of being one who was good in character manners, they revolve around four a hadith. So we want to review those today. To remind ourselves, and we should constantly remind ourselves of good character, good manners. And we will see that that will revolve around everything we do in our life, from our speech to other than that. The first hadith that was mentioned, that manners, good character, and good manners revolve around, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليسمت رواه مسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said whoever believes in Allah and the last day must either speak what is good or be silent this hadith talks about restraining the tongue because the tongue is the main source that can cause evil by lying, by backbiting, by slandering, by cursing and swearing, by, telling, by, by getting angry. For whoever is unable to restrain his tongue, he will never be from the people who has good character or who has good manners. And Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إذا أصبح ابن آدم فإن الأعضاء كلها تكفر تكفر اللسان فتقول اتق الله فينا فإنما نحن بك فإن استقمت استقمنا وإن وإن اعوججت اعوججنا رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث حسن. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said when the son of Adam wakes up every morning all of the body parts Every part, your limbs, your joints, your muscles, your organs, all of them bow down to the tongue. And they, see, they say to the tongue, fear Allah regarding us. We are only a part of you. If you're straight, we will be straight. And if you're crooked, we will be cro- crooked. The tongue can cause so much evil and so much destruction. And this is why the rest of the body bows down to it. Sufyan ibn, ibn Abdullah Thaqafi radiallahu anhu qal Kultu ya Rasulullah haddathani bi amrin a'tasumu bih qala qul rabbi Allah thumma istaqim kultu ya Rasulullah ma akhwafu ma takhafu alayya fa akhadha bi lisani nafsihi thumma qal hadha Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this authentic hadith in the sunnah of the Tirmidhi he was told by Sufyan ibn Abdullah al-Thaqafi radiallahu anhu, O Messenger of Allah, inform me about a matter that I can hold fast to. He said, say my Lord is Allah, and then be steadfast upon this. So then he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, what do you fear the most for me? So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, grabbed his own tongue and he said this. Again, seeing that the source of fitna the source of trials, the source of tribulations, the source of evil is the tongue. And it can destroy everything in your life with one slip. And Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu qal qara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arba'un man kunna fihi kana munafiqan aw kanat fihi khaslatun min arba'atin kanat fihi khaslatun min al-nafaq hatta yada'aha idha haddatha kadab wa idha wa'da akhlaf وَإِذَا عَاهَدَ غَدَرْ وَإِذَا خَاسَمَ فَجَرْ رواه البخاري And although we discussed this a few weeks ago, this has to do, again, you're going to see, as the Prophet ﷺ said, with the tongue, whoever has the following four characteristics is a pure hypocrite. And whoever has one of these four has an aspect of hypocrisy until he gets rid of it. He said, when he talks, he lies. This was the first aspect. What is the source of the lie? It is the tongue. When he makes a promise, he breaks it. What does he make a promise with? His tongue. So when he breaks it, this is again the source, the tongue. Whenever he makes a covenant, he's treacherous. Again, the tongue makes the covenant. Knowing that it's lying, knowing that he's lying, but he still goes through it, knowing that he will commit treachery. And whenever he quarrels or argues, he behaves impudently in an evil, insulting manner. Again, the tongue. So these aspects of nifaq, of hypocrisy, many of them go back to the tongue. 
So this was the first hadith. The second hadith that was mentioned <coughs> about all character and good manners revolving around it is from the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu who said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني. This hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, the Prophet وسلم, said from the perfection of your Islam is that you leave off that which does not concern you. So this hadith teaches us to refrain from engaging in excess and that which does not concern us. The person who concerns himself with the affairs, that they have nothing to be wrong. Keep your nose out of it. Keep your business out of it. But the one who doesn't listen to this and they involve themselves in affairs that don't concern them, whether it's by listening, whether it's by looking, whether it's by speaking, then you are not a person who's considered to have good manners. You're not a person who's considered to have that good character to reach the level of the one who fasts and prays. Why? Because you're always in matters that don't concern you. Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he once said that one of the signs that Allah has turned away from a servant is that the servant finds himself continuously preoccupied and engaged in matters of which are, should not be a concern to him. He should have nothing to do with them. So how do we attain this quality of only caring about that which concerns us? There were three recommendations that were given for someone to stay focused upon this. The first, have haya, have modesty, have shyness. These are beautiful qualities with beautiful rewards and part of iman. As the Prophet ﷺ said that the haya, the shyness and the modesty was part of iman. Second, control your speech. And we just mentioned controlling the tongue as being one of those four main hadith that will get you to good character. It was said that Luqman once was surrounded by his followers and he was asked, weren't you a slave of so-and-so? Didn't you used to be a shepherd of so-and-so? How did you get to this honorable position? So Luqman and Hakim, he responded, <clears throat> truthful speech and long silence with that which doesn't concern me. He told the truth. And things that didn't concern him, he stayed out of. He did not deal with it. To also attain this, you have to think about how you spend your time. So many of us waste so much time in things which will not bring us, bring us any benefit, not bring us any good. And in this case, you are involving yourself in things which don't concern you. Al-Hasan al-Basri, he said, you're nothing but a compilation of breaths. We are nothing but a compilation of breaths. Allah wrote how many breaths we would take in our life, and this is what we are. Every time you exhale, a piece of your life goes, a part of you is lost. How many of our interactions are worthwhile? How many of our interactions are useless? How many times do we involve our things in things that bring us so much distraction from our deen that we have nothing to do with in the first place? Allah, He says, لَا خَيْرَ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِّنْ نَجْوَاهِمْ إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ أَوْ مَعْرُوفًا أَوْ إِصْلَاحٍ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ بِرْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ فَسَوْفَ نُؤْتِيهِ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah says what means, no good is there and you having so much private conversation. If you're having so much private conversation, something is wrong. Except for those who enjoy charity. You're always talking to people to give in charity. Or enjoining them to that which is right and what is pure, to do the ma'roof, to do what is good and what is commanded. Or in reconciliation between two people, getting people who are arguing to make a pact. And whoever does that, seeking the approval of Allah, then we're going to give him a great reward. This is the great reward. Involving yourself in sadaqah, in enjoining what is good, in forbidding what is evil in getting people to reconcile. So what should concern us? We mentioned it last week, remember? Yani when we talked about the parents, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that the, the, Lord's ang- the Lord's pleasure with us is tied to our parents' pleasure with us. And Allah's anger with us, is, our Lord's anger with us, tied to our Lord's, our Lord's anger to us, with us, is tied to our parents' anger with us. This is what should concern us. What is our relationship with our parents? 
What is our relationship with our spouses? What is our relationship with our children? What is our relationship with our brothers and sisters? In Islam, what is our relationship with our neighbor and the likes of these? What should concern us? The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, لا تزول قدم ابن آدم يوم القيامة من عند ربه حتى يسأل عن خمس عن عمره فيما أثناه وعن شبابه فيما أبلاه وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن عمل وماذا عمل فيما علم The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he says that the, the feet of the slaves of uh, the sons of Adam the feet of the sons of Adam will not move on the day of resurrection till they're asked about five things. Till they're asked about their life and how they spent it. Their youth and how they spent it. Their money. How did they earn it? Halal al-haram. And how did they spend it? Halal al-haram. And you will be asked about what you did with the knowledge that you obtained. These are the things that should concern us. Not the other stuff we lose so much time on. The third hadith that we have that discusses or summarizes complete noble manners for us to be given that level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, this is the heaviest thing on our scales. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said that a man said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa advise me, counsel me. فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, لَا تَغْضَبْ فَرَدَّدَ مَرَارًا قَالَ لَا تَغْضَبْ The man asked the Prophet ﷺ to advise him and counsel him. So the Prophet ﷺ could have told him a million and one things. He said, La taqda. Do not get angry. Do not become angry. So the man asked him, Okay, what else? He kept asking, Advise me, counsel me. He kept asking him. And every time the Prophet ﷺ would repeat, La taqda. La taqda. La taqda. Do not become angry. Do not become furious. Do not become enraged. Again, we see a benefit from this hadith. Teaching us self-restraint when we get angry. The best of people get angry. Everybody gets angry. But it's the self-restraint that will get you a high level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the key. Whoever cannot restrain himself or herself from evil when they are angry cannot be considered someone who has good character or good manners. They cannot be considered this. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ليس الشديد بالسرعة إنما الشديد الذي الذي يملك نفسه عند الغضب رواه البخاري. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the strong person is not the one who can win in boxing and wrestling and fighting. Right? This isn't the strong person. Again, just like we heard in the beginning, the wealthy person is the one who's given honor by Allah, not the one with the most money. The strong person isn't the dude with the muscles and the six pack and the one who can get in a ring and demolish everyone who comes across his way. This isn't strength. The strength, the true strength, the true strong person is the one يَمْلَكُ نَفْسُهُ عِنْدَ الْغَدَبْ He restrains himself when anger has come to him. عَنْ أَنِسْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ كَفَّ غَدَبَهُ كَفَّ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَذَابَهُ this hadith, which is in, recorded in Tabrani's collection of a hadith, and it, has, is, it is graded to be sahih. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, if one restrains his anger, Allah will keep his punishment away from him on the day of resurrection. The reward again for controlling your anger. So that Allah is not angered with us on the day of resurrection. And Allah showers us with his mercy and protects us from any punishment on that day. Just because we're Muslim, alhamdulillah, doesn't mean that there's no punishment in the grave for us or on Yom Al-Qiyamah or in Jahannam for that matter as well. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu qal, he said that one of two men cursed the other one next to the Prophet sallallahu until anger can be seen in one of them. So the Prophet sallallahu he said, إِنِّي لَأَعْلَمُ كَلِمَةً لَوْ قَالَهَا لَذَهَبَ غَدَبَهُ we are so proud, we're so arrogant, all of us, that we never want to be true to ourselves. We never want to follow the sunnah when it comes down to being able to express ourselves. The Prophet ﷺ, when he saw this man getting angry and it could show on his face, he's getting red, maybe the veins are popping out, 
He said, I know a word or a phrase that if you were to say it, your ghadab, your anger would leave you. It is a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. I seek refuge with Allah from shaytan. If the person were only to say this, we have cures for anger in the sunnah, but we're so intent on, invo- and on implementing our anger and showing our anger that even though we remember a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, even though we have someone telling us, say a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, when we're getting angry, we don't want to say it till later. How can this person be considered one who has good manners? Other aspects from the sunnah, if you're standing when you get angry, sit down. If you're sitting down, lay down. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, in al-ghadab min al-shaytan, al-shaytan khulqa min al-nar. Anger is from the shaytan, the shaytan is created from fire. What puts out fire? Water. So from the sunnah is to go and make the wudu. But none of us ever want to do this. And I advise myself first, when we get upset or we get angry, so that we can chill and relax and remind ourselves of the importance of that self-restraint so Allah considers us those who have good character and good manners. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we mentioned, one of the Maliki scholars, Ibn Abi Zayd Al Qayrawan, Al Qayrawan, رحمه الله, may Allah have mercy on him. He said that all of the noble, all of the noble manners and etiquettes revolve around the four hadith. Three we mentioned, we'll mention one and we'll summarize them again at the end. The fourth hadith, which all noble manners and etiquettes revolve around, is the hadith from Anas ibn Malik عنه, where he says that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. The fourth hadith, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, none of you truly and completely believes so he loves for his brother or sister in Islam, what they love for themselves. And one narration it mentions for his neighbor, what he loves for himself. And one narration it mentions, للناس, for all of the people, what you will love for yourself. And one narration it mentions also, and that you hate for the people what you would hate for yourself. You cannot achieve good manners and good morals. This hadith was sahih in sunnah ibn Majah. You cannot rectify the heart and the soul unless this hadith is implemented so that a person's heart is free from malice and hatred and envy and jealousy for his brother or sister in Islam. This is why this hadith is part of character and, 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 and etiquette and manners. And Ibn Umar ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي فَرَوْحِمِهِمْ وَتَوَادِهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ كَمَثِلِ الْجَسَدِ إِذَا اشْتَكَى عُدْوًا تَدَاعَ لَهُ سَائِرَ الْجَسَدِ بِالسَّهَرِ وَالْحُمَّةِ That the Prophet ﷺ, he said, you see the believers in regards to their mercy between one another. They're showing love for one another. They're being kind to one another, resembling a body. If one part of the body aches, then the rest of the body will suffer from fever and sleeplessness. And this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Mind you, sometimes this little tooth in your mouth, it wakes you up, you can't sleep from it. A hangnail on your pinky finger will cause you so much throbbing that the rest of you can... This is how we should view all our brothers and sisters in Islam. That one of them, when one of them is struggling or going through some hardship or dealing with something, that it should bother us enough that even if it were to delay our sleep for a second, or five seconds, or something like this. But many of us sleep very easily while knowing that their brothers and sisters in Islam are suffering tremendously. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this hadith, in my opinion, is one of the biggest problems facing us today rather than loving our brothers and sisters in Islam more than ourselves even. We wish them sometimes out loud, sometimes in secrecy, we wish them hardship or fatigue or the removal of blessings. We've gotten into the notion 
My life is about me. What benefits me? This is what we care about. We turn on our brothers and sisters in Islam when they're in need, saying that we can't help when we can help, even if it's with your dua. It's very easy to help even with your dua, even if it doesn't take anything from you. Not anything you put on top of that is better. But we've gotten into this nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. And it's not Yom al yet, but we're all about myself, myself, myself. Maslahati, maslahati, what benefits me and my family, what benefits me and my family. So are we really loving for our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, the people, what we love for ourselves? And hating for them what we hate for ourselves. So in conclusion, if a person requires or acquires a precise understanding of these four hadith and they act upon them, then they have acted upon all the affairs related to good character and good manners. And Allah will honor you and give you a place in the highest of Jannah and make it heavy on your scales on the day of resurrection. And if we can implement them, even be saved from any punishment there at that time. Those four hadith as a reminder, whoever believes in Allah in the last day should say what is good or zip it, be silent. Restrain your tongue. This is what the Prophet was afraid of for many of the ummah. The tongue being let loose because it can destroy everything. The second hadith, من حسن الإسلام المرئي تركه ما لا يعني that from the perfection of someone's Islam is that they leave off that which doesn't concern them. If it's not your business and there's nothing you can do to aid or help someone or something, don't get involved in it. Only be concerned with what concerns you. Third, <clears throat> the man who came to the Prophet and he said, "Oh Sunni, advise me and counsel me." فقال له لا تغضب فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب The man said advise me and counsel me The Prophet ﷺ told him do not become angry And he said advise me He kept asking counsel me, counsel me And his only response was لا تغضب لا تغضب Do not become angry, do not become angry And the fourth hadith من كان يوم The fourth hadith لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه that none of you completely and truly believes till he loves for his brother and sister what he loves for his or her, or her own self. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if we want to be considered noble by Allah, to have our scales heavy on the day of resurrection, we have to work on our manners. I don't care if we say, well, culturally we were brought up, this get over it. Rudeness, harshness, these are not from good character, from good manners. Getting angry, Spewing things with your tongue, false speech, lies, backbiting, slandering. These are not from good characters and good manners. Being concerned with what other people yeah, you may be doing, even though it has no concern to you, this is not from good character and from good manners. Let us work on this so that our scales can be so heavy with them that Allah, He gives us that home in the highest of Jannah. كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا زعيم ببيت في أعلى الجنة لمن حسن خلقه. As the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, I'm a guarantor for a house in the highest of Jannah for the one who perfects their good care, their character and their manners. May Allah make us from them. اللهم خل المسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوب على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوب على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوب على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين